basically what I see just now is like a kind of light gray haze. It's like being in a, in a cloud, I guess. Every Tuesday evening, Barbara Campbell walks around the reservoir in Central Park. Along the way, she can hear the crunch of the gravel under joggers and snatches of conversation. The one thing she can't do is see. My visual impairment, everybody became aware of it um, when I was in sixth grade. Um, they had introduced the kind of exams where you had to take a number two pencil and fill in the little bubbles, and I was having difficulty doing that. And it was a slow, gradual, very, very gradual, progressive uh, deterioration. Campbell started losing her eyesight during adolescence because of retinitis pigmentosa, a disease that attacks the cells that detect light. I noticed when I would be walking in, in very familiar um, areas that I'd walked many, many years that there was stuff I wasn't seeing anymore. They had just disappeared. I was no longer able to see like a phone booth or uh, the parking meters as long as I'm walking down the block. Now 56, Campbell went completely blind more than 20 years ago. I still go to the theater all the time. To me, there's still it's still an experience. It's still you, you're still with friends. You're still doing something. You're still active. You're still out there. I really wasn't one of those people sitting on the internet and calling doctors and what's new? What's new? What's new? You're gonna you know what's what's the latest cure? And I was never one of those people. And yet, earlier this year, Campbell became involved in a clinical trial that might restore her vision. It is an experimental technology that involves direct electrical stimulation of the retina and an external camera that helps patients, quote, see. It is informally known as the artificial retina. I'm incredibly excited that this is such cutting edge um, technology. I'm hoping is being able to see colors again. I'll be very psyched if I can see colors again. Surgeons at Columbia Presbyterian say the artificial retina is a dramatic leap forward in treating patients with retinal diseases. Ophthalmologist Dr. Lucien Del Priori performed Campbell's surgery. What's missing in, you know, in these patients is basically uh, the ability to detect light to begin with. And that really formed the basis for this whole technology, which is essentially to put an electrode array in, you know, in the, in, along the inner retinal surface, as close as you can get it to the retina, and then have a power source that was, can essentially send current through individual electrodes, and then somehow uh, connect that, obviously, to an external camera. In the past, there have been other devices that promise to restore vision. But the artificial retina is one of a very few that has shown concrete results in humans. Take the case of this woman, Kathy Blake. She was blind for over a decade before she started using the artificial retina two years ago. She can now walk a straight line unassisted. A reasonable expectation for someone like Barbara Campbell. A few weeks after the surgery, Dr. Del Priori examines Campbell to see how the 60 electrodes are fitting on her retina. Are uh, you having any problems with the eye after the surgery? Are you having any discomfort nope, or pain not, or anything not at like all. that? Not Nothing. At all. Feels okay? Uh huh. I can have your hand again. I'll show you where the chin rest is. Right. Dr. Del Priori says vision is a very complicated tense, and he warns that this surgery isn't a miracle cure. You know, these are still very um, preliminary and very crude, what we consider very crude levels of vision. Uh, patients, you know, I think seeing simple Seeing patterns, for example, um, uh, I think is a realistic thing too. Being able to make out the outlines of someone's face, um, it actually takes remarkably few pixels uh, to actually tell that it's a human being's face. It's really sort of interesting. So color vision is really kind of very complex. Um, I don't know if she'll see that. But a successful surgery is only the first step. Even though Campbell had vision when she was a child, she still has to learn how to use her new artificial retina. You see that one, right? That one I didn't say. You didn't so, say. No. Do, you want to do it again? For the next three years, yes, Campbell will have weekly therapy sessions with the external camera device to redevelop her visual skills. For example, one test requires her to find simple shapes in the middle of a computer screen and point to them. Close. It was higher on the bottom. For Campbell, it's not as easy as it looks. Since the camera is not uh, attached to her eye and it doesn't move when her eye moves, it only moves when she moves her head. She has to scan that image with her head. And then, um, in addition, once she has found it, she has to be able to point to it. So she has to relearn this eye-hand coordination that all of us uh, learn as, as babies. Recently, Campbell has noticed that she can see bright lights in restaurants and the burners on her stove. 
But the artificial retina won't work for all causes of blindness, like glaucoma. These neurons that we're stimulating, they're actually damaged in people that have glaucoma. So it's hard to envision how this sort of uh, electrical stimulation directly of the retina would, would lead to a return of vision in those patients. But the artificial retina has the potential to help hundreds of thousands with macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa, like Barbara Campbell. Though Campbell has adjusted well to being blind, she is willing to work as hard as she can to see again. I definitely wanted to succeed. I'm very driven that way. And again, it's not just for, for me, it's for so many other people that will follow me. If, if it works for me, then that means it's going to work for a lot more people.